How you doing, everyone? Welcome to the best real estate investing advice ever show. We are doing Facebook Live like we usually do. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below this video, and we will not get to them today because we have a bunch of questions we're not gonna, we're we're trying to get to uh, on today's episode and probably the next couple weeks that have already been submitted. But we will put them in the queue and we will get to them. I promise. You that. <coughs> Uh, so Theo, you ready? Let's do it, Joe. All right, let's go. Best ever listeners, how you doing? Welcome to the best real estate investing advice ever show. I'm Joe Fairless. This is the world's longest running daily real estate investing podcast. We only talk about the best advice ever. We don't get into any of that fluff. And today we are doing a special episode like we usually do called Follow Along Friday. And we have a whole bunch of questions to answer. If you from- a lot from best ever listeners, and we will not get to all of them that have been submitted. Uh, However, we, on this episode, however, we do plan on getting to all of them that have been submitted in this plus future episodes. So if you don't hear your question answered, then sit tight and uh, just keep on tuning in to future episodes. The uh, manly voice you just heard is Theo Hicks. Theo, hope you're having a great day and you ready to rock? I'm ready to rock, Theo. Let's do it. All right. And uh, Theo's recovered <coughs> from a an illness. Yeah. From He went to Disney World and... It got me good. Got him good. Uh, so fortunately, he's well enough to do the show with us. Um, so hopefully the sniffling and the coughing doesn't bother anyone. Yes, yes. Well, we can try and edit some of that out. Let me make sure I don't do it on you either. <laughs> I'll turn this way. I appreciate it. All right, how do we want to approach today? Uh, so before we get into the question, do we just give a quick update on, on any, any, any deals you're working on in your business or you know, best thing that's happened to you, worst thing that's happened to you since we last spoke? Yeah, I, I'd say um, yeah, the deal we're closing on in Dallas, the 200 plus unit apartment community that's directly across the street from the one we already own is going well. Um, and I, let's see. One, one observation, and this is not related to that deal, but one observation I had was here in my local community, a uh, business went out of business. Mm. It was a cupcake, cupcake shop. And I did not know it was going out of business, although it, yeah, I, I kind of could tell because it didn't have very many customers, but I didn't know it was in that situation. And... Then you know, one day, Colleen and I are walking Jack, our dog, and we notice that it's out of business. And it made me think of the idea that a lot of businesses have a going out of business sale. And then once that's done, then they go out of business. But I've never heard of a business having a, we're in trouble and a will, we might go out of business if we don't get help sale. Hmm. And I was thinking, and this is a random thought, by the way. I recognize that, but maybe there's application in real estate. Certainly, as entre- <coughs> entrepreneurs, if we're in trouble, asking for help from the community and trying to get that help so that we don't have to then go out of business. In this case, they didn't even have a going out of business sale. They just went out the next, you know, overnight. However, instead of having a going out of business sale, maybe it's, can you help us out? We're in trouble sale and then rally the community because a lot of times businesses might not know that they have dedicated customers and people who follow their company or brand or product or service and that could help rally the troops and perhaps together they can make, you know, right the ship. No, that's a good point. I've never heard of that either. You always see it for like the furniture stores. Um, but no, but I think that's a good point just because I'm just kind of reflecting on, on myself and I'm the kind of person that has like a, a lot of difficulty asking for help. Just because I don't, I don't know, it's just I don't, I don't know. I don't know why that is. I have to figure that. Because you're a man. Yeah, exactly. As a man, <laughs> I guess men are are, are stereotypically uh, and don't want to ask for help. But I mean, we're in a business where you you can't do it by yourself. No, you have to you have to ask for help. So if something were to go wrong, you know, not only could someone help you, you know, whether it's financially or I guess just support you if you're having a hard time, or just ask them like, hey, I've got this issue at my property and I have no idea how to fix it. Instead of just ignoring it or mm-hmm. stumbling my way through it and maybe fixing it, it just takes two seconds to send someone an email or send someone a message on on, on bigger pockets or you know submit a best ever mm-hmm. listener question. So I think that, I think that they're, they're definitely kind of random. Just 
asking for help and um, kind of getting over the something like a fear. It's just like you, you just don't want to. Mm-hmm. You, you, you don't want to address you, it. Yeah, you know, yeah. So, Thank yeah, you for connect point. for connecting the dots for me <laughs> and, and making that a relevant observation for a real estate show. I, I and it totally is now that you connected the dots for me and. Uh, when we, because when we have a deal, you just said, when we have a deal and it's not doing well or a particular business not doing well, don't wait until it's too late. Rather, talk to people who you already know, tell them, hey, I'm in trouble. Is there something that you know of that I should be doing? Exactly. And you'll, you know, you might come up with solutions. You, they might say, you just need to end this thing, close it out, and move on. Who knows? But that's, I, a, that's a good observation. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, what about you? What remind everyone what you recently bought, and then if you have okay, yeah. So I I recently, um, I think, and I think think next week will be a month since I officially bought three four unit properties of twelve units total, um, all in purchase price of six hundred sixty thousand, and um, really no new updates this past week. Nothing's. And nothing's happened no, in, the, in the past week. Nothing falling on cars. Yeah, no more ceilings falling on cars. Uh, no more you know, leaks going in the basement. And I mean, the only thing I've done is I went over there and, and mowed the lawns and kind of timed it to see how long it took based off our last conversation to make sure I was spending my time properly. Um, I guess the only update is that what, uh, what we have on the agenda for this month is to uh, re-sign leases with everyone. And the approach is going to be uh, emailing or calling everyone because we have everyone's email now. I'm not going to the notes on the door anymore because I don't think they necessarily like the notes on the door. Um, I'll only do that like if I have to, but I, I think having everyone's email address is the way I'm going to use it for now because everyone is responsive that way. And we're going to um, set up a time to, to go in there and meet with, kind of, kind of meet everyone and let them know who we are. Uh, not, not actually who we are, we're the site managers. And we're going to resign leases. And then uh, based on the conversation I had with, with, with Linda of Secure One, I'm not sure if I mentioned this last week or not, but she said something very interesting. She said when you go in there, when you first take over a property, you ask them, you know, what's one thing you want to have, have fixed that hasn't been addressed by the previous owner? And so that's the, that's, that's the warning I'm going to use. I think last time we talked about how we're afraid that they'll be like, oh, you know, redo my kitchen. It's like, well, that's not what I meant. And so we're going to do that to kind of get off on the, the, the right foot with the, the new residents. And... It's that way, since we address something based off of kind of, I think what you said way back when I first bought the property, you actually do something and then you can raise the rents up to market rents mm-hmm. versus just going in there and just raising them mm-hmm. and not doing anything and then kind of kind of coming across um, maybe maybe a little slimy, I don't know, but but yeah, but besides that, uh, nothing really going on on that front. Um, and then I guess the only thing, the worst thing that's happened to me is I'm sick, but I'm getting better, so that's the best ever thing that's <laughs> that's happened. Being sick, I mean just. It may be real estate related, but it kind of put things into perspective. Because when I get sick, I'm just like a complete baby. And maybe even goes back to asking for help, like asking Marcella to like help me get food and stuff. But but man, I was like, I was like in a complete like fog for like three or four days, and like everything that happened was negative and the worst thing that's ever happened. And uh, so it feels so much. It feels so good to be better. <laughs> well, when when you're sick, if you can do some, you know, written down affirmations when you first wake up that might help and I, I, I you know for the last 20 days I've been doing that and mm-hmm. just I it's such a powerful way to wake up and, and we talked about where I heard that from the Tim Ferriss podcast yeah. interviewing yeah it's, I thought it wasn't it his morning it was, it was his morning yeah, yeah. Uh, routines yeah. I, haven't, I haven't saved I think it's like episode one it's like, it I, I, I haven't saved it on my phone yeah it doesn't, yeah, doesn't matter Anyway, um, that that's one thing. You know, if you're sick and you need a little jump start, maybe you, maybe you do that. But hopefully, you don't persist to be sick. So yeah, I'm, cool. I don't want to go into Disney World for another till till um, uh, New Year's. I mean, I'll probably be sick again then. Oh wow! <laughs> Twice two two Disney Worlds in one in twelve yeah. month period. I love it there, man. Oh my god! <laughs> okay, I love that place. Oh, I, I would not have guessed that. Okay, um, we have a lot of questions mm-hmm. and from. You, the best ever listeners, uh, and all of them that we're going to t- t- discuss today will be a part- <coughs> apartment syndication related, with one exception. One exception. And that question came last week, and we want to make sure we address it. And it was from Jacob. Yep. Right. And I mean, basically, he was asking, how do you go about 
uh, selling a one a you know, single family home or two to four unit home and uh, have it be valued using the uh, like the cap rate and the income versus well, I, I, I think he was what what do you have the actual question yeah, I the, thought he was asking about a portfolio like if you have multiple single family homes can you buy can you yes. group it together as a portfolio so what's the exact question so the exact question is is it realistic to expect to be able to sell a portfolio of single family homes and two to four units as a commercial property based off its income as you would an apartment building yeah okay so yes it is interviewed an expert on this on the show his name is Mark Allen he's a broker for Sperry Van Ness in Fort Worth Texas what episode is that uh, 920 episode episode 920 Mark Allen and he talks about the benefits of doing that uh, being one you sell off of the NOI and then you've got the beauty of cap rates multiplying your value to you uh, lower your broker fees because you're selling them in bulk and just your overall transaction fees are lower uh, so if you want more information on that topic in particular then just listen to that interview uh, search Mark Allen A-L-L-E-N Joe Fairless and that interview will come up and it is or just 900 920 920 you can go check it out perfect move on to multifamily syndication questions multifamily Apartment syndication questions. Okay, this is from, these are from David B. And uh, David, you asked a bunch of questions, and that's good. Uh, we just won't get to all of them on, on this call um, or on the show. So uh, the first question is, how do you choose your market and how should I choose mine? And then he says, I know most people say invest close to home and choose a place with job growth where one employer doesn't have the majority of jobs. I've spoken to many syndicators who invest in places like Texas, Cali, Indiana, Arizona, and Nevada, but I haven't, had, I haven't met many who invest in Florida. He's living in Florida. What makes them choose those places? Okay, so uh, I don't know what makes people choose what they choose, so I, I can't answer that. But I can answer your first question, and that is, how did you choose your market, and how should I choose mine? What I, how I choose, and how we choose our markets, uh, is based on what you said earlier um, in your question, and that is job diversity, <coughs> uh, and how no one employer makes up more than tw more than twenty five percent of jobs in an, in a market. Dallas Fort Worth it's 14% is a leading industry according to the census uh, census.gov and Nevada flip flip that Nevada is I want to say 28% for hospitality yeah cuz the casinos and stuff casinos and stuff exactly uh, so that is the primary thing uh, I look at is job diversity because when one employer one industry goes away I want the rest of the economy to pick up the slack in addition uh, I look at the supply and demand want to make sure that the absorption rate so that's factoring in the amount of new builds plus current inventory and looking at how many potential renters there are uh, uh, juxtaposed to that I want to make sure that's healthy and lastly, or not lastly, but the, the, I'd say the third primary thing I look for is just the overall growth in the population and the population trend. So I want to make sure people can afford to uh, pay the rent so they have jobs and there's job diversity. People are coming there and will continue to come there. There's not a mass exodus. And then there's healthy supply and demand. Those are the three primary things we look for, but there's about seven or eight other things. Yep. What, when you look for a market, what do you look for? And I know there's overlap, but anything in particular that I didn't mention? Yeah, so I guess this is more for, for my smaller property, for the, for the smaller properties, but I mean, honestly, right now, what I, what I looked at was it's the closeness to um, Oakley and Hyde Park, which is, people aren't gonna understand what that means, they're not from Cincinnati, but they're two really nice areas in Cincinnati that are, they're, they're building a ton, a ton of uh, apartments in, and the rents are 
insanely high, and my assumption is that the thing, uh, the, the locations on the the outskirts are going to be the new Oakley yeah. five ten years from now. And it's not it's not time to go in there and, and look at the the rents and the property values and see how those are, are trending with time. And if they kind of I guess beat my assumptions, then I'll invest there. That's how I picked Pleasant Ridge. I and you a little did, differently. You nailed Pleasant Ridge, by the way. I didn't mention this, but Colleen and I went to the new Mexican restaurant in yeah. Pleasant Ridge. I can't remember what it's called. Casa but. Fuego, I Is think. It good? Amazing, okay, amazing okay. house margaritas, and that's it's your area is going to get the spillover from the uppity up areas that yeah. are directly next to it. I'd say, but maybe maybe one other thing just to mention is that I I subscribe to the well, my friend subscribes to like the the business uh, courier here, so I'm not sure if every uh, state or state has that. But I know like Dallas has one. I know they have one up in Dayton and Columbus. But I'll I'll read that and just kind of see where's where, where, where are they building new development at because it'll be it'll. It'll come out like a year before they even. I mean, the, the entire project is, is is tracked from you know they are first talking to uh, city council and when the plans are being created, and then when they're to start and when it's done. And you got to see, you know, I think a, a long you know, a couple of years ago they mentioned how they're going to start building all these new you know, restaurants in I guess they call it downtown Pleasant Ridge. And so that was I, I remember kind of in the back of my mind I remember reading that like a year ago. And um, so yeah, so we can kind of use we can kind of use that to like get ahead of the game too. It's like, oh, well, they're building something in two years over here, and so in two years from now, people are probably going to be wanting to invest there, or maybe they're going to be selling, or something will happen there. So maybe if I get there ahead of time, I can you know, I maybe catch that appreciation curve. Not basing my decision solely on that, but just that's the added, added advantage of getting in somewhere early. So that's smart. Just kind of reading up yeah. on the area too. Yeah, I like that. And that's similar to what Barbara Corcoran said whenever I interviewed her on the show, how she was looking for the up-and-coming areas, and she wasn't reading the newspaper, but she was looking <coughs> to see where uh, the artists were moving to. Huh. You know, and, yeah, that's a good point. And just following the artists, and it, one of her best investments turned out, you know, that, that's how she found it. Okay. Uh, and as far as investing in Florida... Why I have chosen to stay out of Florida is because I don't because we have a really good thing going in Dallas Fort Worth. So why why rock the boat? You know why why try and it mess things up just for the sake of you know checking some other markets out? Uh, we diversify within sub markets of Dallas Fort Worth, but. I think there's a really good thing that's going to continue to happen in DFW for at least the next five years. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Anything can happen, but the fundamentals are there for DFW. As far as you know, Fort Worth, Nevada, Arizona, or Phoenix in particular. I know I'm grouping some states and some cities, so I'm about to make a generalization, and obviously not <clears throat> everything is applied to what I'm about to say for each of those three areas, uh, Arizona, Florida, and Nevada. I mean, generally speaking, when the market corrects itself, those areas historically have been hit the hardest. And so we've got to really pay attention to mm -hmm. the fundamentals of how you buy, and that ties back to uh, a question that you ask later um, about what what we look for in a property and that is stabilized cash flowing properties so that means they're at least 90 percent occupied and they have value add components to them ideally built 1980 to 2000 somewhere around there and that mitigates risk because we're not buying a distressed property that is older we're buying a relatively newer property that is performing. Uh, we're buying a business that's currently making money, and we're simply enhancing the cash flow through those value add streams. Uh, so you you can take that approach and, and apply it to those other states, but you know that's just generally why mm -hmm. I'm focused on DFW. All right, next question is how do you find off market deals and actually get the owners or someone of power to respond? I've sent out direct mail and called some owners with no luck so far. Well, we have interviewed, fortunately, apartment investors who <coughs> tell stories about how they found off-market deals. And 
will include, I have the episodes, I'm going to mention them real quick. There's one, two, three, four, five, six of them. But we'll also include these six episodes in the uh, show notes. Uh, and we got it. Grant's got it for it. Perfect. Yeah, Theo was reaching for his computer right there. Yeah, we, we got a team member who's going to do that. Uh, so we've got Grant, um, our team member, will include it in the show notes when the episode goes live. So you'll see it. And we'll, if you're watching right now via Facebook Live, then he'll include it in the link below. Uh, the episodes really quickly are 180 and it's titled A Brilliant Way to Find Off-Market Commercial Real Estate Deals You've Never Heard Of Before. I wish I could just tell you what it is, but I totally forgot what that one way is. <laughs> so you'll have to listen to that episode. Episode 345, Your Guide to Direct Mail, Cold Calling, and Multifamily Purchasing with, with Investor John Cohen. He's a, an apartment syndicator in um, Long Island. Met with him a couple times. Great guy. Episode three, and he's been on the show multiple times. Episode three hundred and forty: How to find multifamily deals without brokers with Juan Maldonado. Mm-hmm. I do remember that conversation. He's based in Texas. I want to say San Antonio, Austin area, and he talks about how he drives uh, for dollars for apartment communities, mm-hmm. and he talks about that in the interview. Episode 849, How to Leverage Brokers to Hustle for Deals with Stash. He is a broker in Cincinnati, and he talks about how to work with brokers to get deals. Now, obviously, that won't be a deal without a broker because he is a broker, and he talks about how to work with brokers. However, you can get off-market deals through brokers. You just have to pay their fee, but that will... um, uh, remove the competitive bid situation from the equation Mm. so you can still get a better deal we've purchased deals that way episode 868 how to snag deals from brokers and what questions to ask with andrew cushman and episode 934 how to find deals in a hot market with joe fairless (laughs) (laughs) so i i do remember how to do that one and that is uh where I discuss how we purchased uh, two apartment communities, one on market, one off market, and combined the uh, operations and we're able to pay a market price for one because we're getting a below market price for the other. And overall, it was a really good deal. Mm -hmm. And we're doing something similar right now. Uh, We've, you know, we own the property across the street that we're closing on next month. And the property across the street was off market. The property we're buying now is on market. We're in combined, um, not uh, not the properties. So from the public standpoint, it will still be different properties. And from a bank account and everything, they're separate. However, we're able to, from a operations standpoint, have um, have efficiencies because of because of that. And I'll give you one additional tip. This is something that. I suspect you have not heard of before uh, for how to find off-market deals uh, locally. And that is go to the courthouse when they're going through the uh, eviction um, proceedings Hmm. and identify which landlords are going there frequently because they're likely have better things to do and want to be doing with their life than going to eviction court to be kicking out their tenants. And perhaps they will be motivated sellers. So if you um, are living locally, and in this case, David, you mentioned, you know, investing in Florida or why people don't. Well, if you want to invest in Florida where you're at and um, try and get some off-market deals, then do that research go to the courthouse and um, start speaking to those owners and you're gonna find some motivated sellers or people who are at least gonna have a conversation with you because they don't wanna be there. That's a really good one. I'm sure you get a really good deal if you catch up someone at the right time. You've got a bunch of evictions. That's a really good idea. It's a good one. And then uh, we've got time for one more question then we'll move on and uh, we'll get to your additional questions, David, as well as anyone else who submitted questions, which we have a couple of people. We'll get to those on a future episode. So last question, when your goal is to come to the table with zero dollars, how do you structure the deal? And he's talking about apartment syndication. 
How do you structure the deal so that the in investors pay for lawyer fees associated with creating the company, PPM, subscription package, etc.? Well, th those fees or those items you mentioned are all part of the closing costs. Therefore, uh, they are paid out by your entity at closing and you and investors are part of that entity. So um, that's, that's how your I mean, that, that's a typical apartment syndication. Um, the entity uh, pays for the costs associated to closing and those items you mentioned, PPM, subscription agreement, company agreement, lawyer fees, that is part of doing business. So that's what the entity pays for. Um, so it's just a, it's just a typical um, syndication model. Um, and obviously, you, if you invest in your deals alongside investors, then um, you're, you're contributing to that because you have you know, part ownership in the deal. If you're not, then you're still contributing technically because you have ownership in the deal and the payment is you know, paid out. And then after that, all profits are distributed based on your percent ownership. So your ownership will be watered down just like everyone else's when you pay those fees. But that's just an expense. It's, just, it's an expense just like anything else, like um, paying a plumber to come fix a, a toilet. Um, so that, that's how it's structured. Sweet. All right. Uh, what else we got? So you got a couple of, of, of interviews. Uh, so that's, I guess, exclusive interviews coming up next week. You wanted to mention? Yeah, it is two football players. Well, I, think, I think Wesley. I think one's a football player, one's a basketball player. Because I think one of the guys is a basketball player, right? Tony Delk. Is he? he? One, one of the two. Oh, I know Fletcher is, is a yeah. former football player, and I should know Tony Delk. I recognize his name. Uh, basketball, yeah. UK. UK, okay, so we've got some, uh, any Wildcat listeners, I've got one of my good friends is uh, a Wildcat, passionate basketball fan, so <laughs> I'm probably getting, I'll probably get some hate mail after yeah. not, not recognizing Tony Delk's <laughs> name immediately, that UK fan base is rabid, I know that, especially basketball, well, um, yes, interviewing Tony Delk and uh, Terrell Fletcher next week. And those interviews will be coming out, you know, in the next next couple weeks. So looking forward to that. Talking to them about entrepreneurship and what they're doing post professional life, uh, because as real estate investors, we are all entrepreneurs, and that's something that you know we can we can learn from how to how to reinvent yourself or how to when you're in a full time job. In this case, you know they're you know they were sports professionals. How to um, Transition into business while maintaining your full time job. So how do yeah. they do that? So it's it's all relevant, and you know they've clearly excelled at the highest level within their within their um, professions. Okay, cool. I'm looking forward to those interviews. And the newest one, uh, I'll also mention the the, the conference. Yeah, up next year. Yeah, conference February 9th, tenth. Go to besteverconference.com. Got the early bird special a ticket. It's the uh, best value you will get. Uh, ever uh, with the conference and the early bird tickets are limited and for sure they will end by Halloween uh, so if you want to go to the conference and the reason why is I mean it's the I, I promise you it's the most high quality of a c attendees that you'll come across at the conference that's what we heard last year and um, there's no sales no no nothing from speakers it's just all about well, no, nothing. <laughs> there is something. <laughs> There's quality content, uh, and it's it's all about helping you accomplish the goals that you set out to accomplish when you attend. So we actually have a questionnaire that you'll fill out uh, after you um, sign up for the conference, and we'll make sure that we personalize the content to accomplish what you're looking to accomplish at the conference. Yep. Yeah, it was, it was a good. It was a good time last year. I think. Yeah, it was, it was, I think one of my, my favorite part was you got the speakers that you kind of mentioned that are just you know million dollars in real estate, been doing it for decades, but you actually get to talk to them because it's a multi-day event, and so they they'll speak and then they'll kind of be in the crowd during breaks and actually talk to them and 
get to know them and ask them more you know, detailed questions based off of your personal experience and kind of what you want to get out of it. And from my perspective, that's the most value I got out of it was the conversation with the speakers during the break, during the dinners, which is, you know, you don't get to do that if you don't go to the, if you, if you don't you know, show up to some sort of uh, real estate conference in, in, in person, just in general. So, mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, the, the relationships. I mean, Tim Ferriss talks about going a inch wide and a mile deep with with networking and I wholeheartedly embrace that go and even though I have a podcast where I interview a person a day <laughs> but but from building relationships just you don't blast out you know don't hand out all these business cards just go inch wide get to know people and go a mile deep with with certain people and get, you do that with the right people and it's it's a game changer uh, additionally I want to mention it's a lot of fun to join the best ever uh, community Facebook group. If you haven't already, just search best ever. I think it's just best ever community on Facebook. Best ever community on Facebook. We've got all sorts of fun <laughs> stuff we're doing from what's the one piece of advice you would, you would not give a, um, a real estate investor starting out to how many deals have you done just to see the, the high quality again of how many deals people in the group have done, a conversation around what challenges you're currently coming across in the community helping you out, and all sorts of other things. We might, we might have some exclusive you know, videos or, or um, offers through that Facebook group. You'll enjoy it if you're, you know, if you're a Facebook person, then go to Best Ever Community on Facebook. Ask to be accepted into it. We'll uh, accept you, and we'll we'll uh, you know jump right in. Cool. And finally, we'll, we'll end with the the review of the week. So again, we we really appreciate these reviews and, and the feedback of what you guys like and what we can do more of. Uh, but this week, the review of the week goes to to Chris, where he says Joe puts in a ton of effort to give his listeners the absolute best content. The variety of guests on his show are very impressive and provide tremendous value. I listen to this every day, and it has launched my career in real estate. Thanks, Joe. Oh, sweet. Yeah, yeah, I love hearing that. And one thing that we are improving upon, and hopefully you noticed it this week versus previous Follow Along Fridays, is that uh, Theo sends me the agenda two days before we record. That way, I can see what the agenda is and can prepare. It versus. All previous follow along Fridays, he'd show up and he'd be like, "All right, here's what we're talking about." I'm like, okay, and I had to do it on the spot. So now I'm more prepared and um, can provide more quality content mm -hmm. on follow along Friday. So we're going to do that moving forward, and uh, you'll see a increase in um, just being more succinct. I know that was a comment a while ago, yep. which I think I'm pretty succinct though, uh, but giving more substantive stuff to you. So exactly. uh, ho hopefully you recognize that and appreciate it. Well, enjoyed it. Thanks again for listening. Best ever listeners. Hope you have a best ever weekend and we'll talk to you tomorrow.